All right, it is 11 o'clock. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm Lisa Quedno. I am an associate director here at the Minnesota State High School League, and I am fortunate enough to be the tournament director for the girls basketball tournament. And I appreciate you all being on and joining today. Um, I know it's a kind of a whirlwind for those of you who just played last night. And so we are hoping to use some time today with you to give you good information to prepare you and your team to have the best state tournament experience you can have. With me today, I have Pat Barrett, who is um, our, our liaison to the Girls Basketball Coaches Association. Pat was here early this morning um, helping do the random draws, and he is going to share a little bit of information that will help you before we get started today. So Pat, go ahead. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, congrats to everyone. I know how hard you've worked to get to this place and enjoy every moment because this week will go by in a whirlwind for sure. Um, I wear many hats in girls basketball. One is I work for NSPN.TV and uh, it helps the broadcasters so much if you can respond and get lineups and stats and anything else you want them to share in the broadcast to highlight your team. So help them out with that. Uh, the banquet is on Tuesday night. It is a first class spectacular experience other than the MC. So definitely try and get your team down there. Uh, they have a wonderful backdrop to take some pictures. You can get your souvenir sweatshirts and all that stuff early there. And uh, last year really was a, an extremely well done event and it will be again this year. So try to be a part of that. And the third piece is uh, I do the all tournament committee and someone, if you happen to get to the consolation final, I know that's not where you want to be, but you might, especially for the team that wins the consolation final, look for someone from our committee to find you. If you lose the game, maybe if you have a spectacular performance for three games, somebody else might get on. But we will try and find you right after the game and let you know who's going to be recognized at the state tournament uh, championship games and get on the all-tournament team. So look for someone from us to find you uh, right after the game. And uh, that's all I got. Have a blast this week. I'm envious. Thanks, Pat. Thanks for being here and helping us. I appreciate it greatly. Um, I have some members of our staff as well on today. Laura McIntoon has joined us and will be talking all things website and other details that will help you navigate the tournament. Uh, Marissa Adsenberger is my assistant and she has been sending you many things for the last few weeks. Um, to prepare you and to help us to do the seating. And so she is on today and she's a great resource should you have any questions. Um, we will go to the agenda next and kind of talk through the things. This is being recorded. This recording will also be uploaded to your dashboard. So your AD and coach dashboard will have access to this recording. Should you have any questions, it's a great resource to go back and search through um, as we will try to cover the majority of the things you will need to know to have a great week. So this is our agenda today. I'm gonna to introduce you to our tournament management team. There's a checklist at the very beginning that talks about all of the things that you need to get to us in the next few days. Um, and then we'll talk about website resources, media, video exchange, behavior expectations, and review the participating schools guide, which is also on your coach's dashboard. It's really a nice thing to print off and just bring with you should you need to reference that. So we will start with our tournament management. Sharon Early, our longtime tournament manager, will be at Williams Arena. I know she is joining us and trying to get on um, and we'll have some things to share with at the end. Barb Bisey is here. She is our tournament manager at Maturi and will also join us at Williams Arena for Friday and Saturday. Um, and then we will have Neil Fletcher and Tony Fisher as our tournament managers at Concordia University have been doing that for a long time and we're really appreciative of them doing that. Uh, myself with my email address, should you need anything? And again, Marissa on here with her email address, please reach out and ask questions as you navigate this. Thank you so much. Um, an important slide, checklist of items. I know that it's um, a busy time preparing, preparing your team as well as getting things in. There is a video exchange. We will talk more about that in the slides um, in, in the few moments, but that is due on Sunday, March 10th. Please make sure you're communicating with um, the team that you are going to be playing in that video exchange. 
team admittance form. This is a really important form. This is how you will um, get into the tournament with your team, your student managers, and your coaches. And so that is something that you're, you should be working with your activities director on and make sure that it is in um, tomorrow by 4 p.m. Activities directors, especially your band and cheer entry form will be due to us Monday, March 11th at 9 a.m. Um, this will be very helpful, helpful for us to know those of you who are planning to bring your cheer team or your band so that we can prepare for a great experience for them as well. Your team administrative rep will be identified on, on um, a form that should be sent to us so we have that contact information. There are times that your administrative rep may change throughout the week, depending on who is able to attend from your district. And so please identify that by nine o'clock on, on Monday so that we're aware of the person who's going to be there to represent your school administratively. Hotel bookings. Um, this is on uh, your coach's dashboard. We do have hotels, um, some hotels secured. It is a busy time in St. Paul and Minneapolis um, because of the Big Ten tournament. And so please make sure that if you are staying, that you check um, those hotels that do have some reserve booking for you. Um, you again are welcome to stay at a hotel of your choice, but we do have some identified and are prepared um, for you if you call them. And then student media applications. This would be an application for someone who covers your yearbook or does something in your school as far as media. Um, this application process is on our website and that would include also an, adv an adult advisor coming with them. That's somebody from your school who has been working with your student media all year. And that form is on our website and due by March 12th at 7 p.m. At this time, I'm gonna turn it over to Laura who can talk through some of the details and logistics for you. Good morning, everyone. And as Lisa said, congratulations on qualifying for a state tournament. We're looking forward to a great tournament starting on Wednesday and continuing through Saturday. My goal over the next few minutes is to give you some information that will help you find information and prepare both you as well as your teams and your communities for a great tournament experience. The slide you're looking at right now is an assistance for ADs and coaches to find information that will prepare you and your team for the upcoming tournament. This is information that is on your dashboard behind a login and is aimed at you as coaches and ADs. And if you follow the three gold numbers there, number one on your dashboard, once you've logged in, you're going to see a big blue rectangle that says my sport and activity information. When you click on the rectangle there indicated by that red arrow, you're going to get at least one, if not more bands like number two shows. You should get one band here for each sport you coach. And if you're an AD, you get a band for every sport that your school has. Finding the girls basketball one, you'll click on that little plus sign over on the right-hand side, and that'll bring you to number three. Number three is where you find everything girls basketball related. The left-hand side of that is information that has resources that have been there all year to help you have a successful girls basketball season. The middle section are resources that your section tournament administration loaded. And the third side, the far right-hand side, is what we're looking at today as we prepare for the state tournament. As Marissa and or Lisa or others in our office email things to you, we also work real hard to make sure that all of those things are also placed in the state tournament resource section. This makes this that go-to stop for everything that you receive from our office. So again, as Lisa said, that the recording and the slides will be there. As soon as we're done today, those will get uploaded to that section. We're going to talk later about a team admittance form that also is loaded in, in that state tournament resources section. So again, coaches and ADs, this is for you specifically on your dashboard. The next slide has a screenshot of the public side of the website. And again, there's information here for coaches and ADs that will help you, but this is where you want to drive your public to with any questions or information they have. 
by going to the website and going up under sports and activities, which is one of those boxes up at the top, and then picking girls basketball. Or you see down at the bottom, there is a shortened URL if you're sending this to people and just want to send them to this page, mshsl.org slash girls basketball takes you right to this girls basketball page. Those blue buttons underneath state tournament information are where all of the state tournament resources are for the public. This list will start to grow as we move through the next few days, but this is where you'll find a schedule, the spectator guide that Lisa referenced, which again is a, a printable document that many fans and spectators find have all the information they need. ADs often find this saves them time to send that spectator guide directly to their fans. This is where an apparel link will be. Links for streaming will be added here. The brackets are linked here. When the programs are ready, again, those will be linked here. So finding that girls basketball page and then those blue buttons under state tournament, this is without a login. So it's information for your public as well as you for coaches and ADs. Marissa, if you'd move ahead a slide, a few of the things you'll find on this page. One is the programs, a reminder that all of our programs are online only, helping your fans and communities know that and be prepared for that. Many choose to bookmark that program. Um, some choose to view or print a page or two with some rosters on. And again, you'll see some shortened URLs there that you can use to drive people to that program. That program will likely be published tomorrow late afternoon. Thanks to everyone for getting their information into Ellen Rakuski in our office um, to facilitate that program. Another one of those links on that green button, blue buttons. All right, sorry about that. We lost Laura for a moment. She is coming to us live from the Excel Center. So it's a subscription-based service at $10 a month and $30 a year. Um, Semifinals and championship games are streamed and broadcast on Prep 45. And again, that's a complimentary piece at that semifinal and championship level. Additional information on that public page, Marissa, if you could move ahead a slide, is information on apparel. You can see a quick graphic over on the right-hand side of this year's girls' basketball apparel. We're incredibly excited to have Signature Concepts as our apparel provider for our second year. They do a great job. They will be on site um, during quarterfinal rounds and beyond. They work real hard to have enough stock on hand. However, we do encourage you to shop early for best selection. You can always order online. There is a shipping fee um, with those orders also. Ticket information. Tickets are currently on sale. You can link to all of the tickets at mshsl.org slash tickets. There's a button up at the very top of the website that says tickets, also linked from that girls basketball page. Just to note that we do have two online ticket vendors for our girls basketball tournament. The U of M uses our uses the go for ticketing system and games being played at Concordia will use hometown ticketing. So again, as your folks move from one site to another, that is another thing ADs just to alert them to that it does look different buying a ticket, whether you're buying at the U of M or at Concordia. And then moving ahead, I'm gonna turn it to Tim Layton out of our office to talk a little bit about media and student media. Very good, thank you, Laura, and welcome to everybody. And, and as I share uh, with coaches during uh, seating meetings, congratulations to all of you. If you are on this meeting, that means you've had a terrific season and uh, an incredible week uh, is, is in store. Uh, right now, we're wrapping up the boys hockey tournament in, in St. Paul, uh, championship Saturday here. But next week, the girls basketball state tournament takes center stage, and we are excited as can be uh, to, to host that. As it relates to media, for this is not only for the uh, administrators on the call, but also for the coaches to, for your awareness. The student media program is in um, effect for the uh, girls basketball state tournament. What that means is the student media uh, program permits up to two students and one faculty advisor to attend 
to be able to cover the games and the events on behalf of the publications within your school and your district. All media applications for the student media program must flow through the activities administrator. Uh, your yearbook advisor or your, uh, your other faculty members, they need to flow through you and be made by the uh, administrators. One thing to really stress here, folks, is the faculty advisor needs to be on site with these uh, two students. This is an experiential learning program, and we need to make sure that that faculty advisor is indeed uh, on site to help with guidance and to help uh, the learning piece of that. Uh, your deadline to do that is 7 o'clock on Tuesday evening. Uh, two other things to share before I um, pass this back to Lisa. The news conference centers will be in effect for the state tournament. During the quarterfinals, we will do what's called a media scrum. Someone from the media team will bring you to the, uh, the uh, interview areas, and there it's a, uh, a, a interview session that's less formal than the news conference center during the semifinal and the championship round. Final note is that Brian Monahan, he's the executive producer of 45 TV's production of the Girls Basketball State Tournament. He will be reaching out to each of you coaches in the next day or so to uh, discover information about your team. So be on the lookout for that call from Brian Monahan of 45 TV. That's all for me today. I wish everybody the best in your preparations for this week and safe travels to the Twin Cities. Lisa, back to you. Thank you, Tim. I appreciate your information and good thoughts. And Laura, thank you as well. It's always good to have um, different voices and we will move to some other information now more related to um, some details you will need to know. Video exchange, I talked about this earlier. All teams are required to participate. This came through your coaches association and as a request um, based on state tournaments. So section championship games are usually what is shared unless coaches agree to exchange something different. Um, we are we encourage you to use huddle if possible. Um, and the high seed is the team that's responsible for facilitating this by Sunday, March 10th at one o'clock. Uh, ADs and coaches, this is a new document to some of you and some of you have seen it already in some of our other winter sports. This is a document that talks about behavior expectations for all participants, including spectators, fans, players, and others. And these behavior expectations were generated by students in the past two years, as well as some requirements of attendees, things that we don't allow. Um, it's a really important document that you make sure your communities are aware of as they come to our events. A big note on this one, especially with fan buses, the University of Minnesota does not allow backpacks. Um, for spectators into the venue. And so as you prepare ADs for um, bringing your fan buses and bringing your students, please make sure that you are aware that they don't allow backpacks or outside food and drinks. Um, there is a nice list here as well as some other things um, to make sure you're working with your students as well as your um, spectators who are attending. This is something that's in our spectator guide that Laura talked about earlier. Um, as well as on AD dashboards, and it's printable and shareable, um, so please do so as you're able to. Another note for administrative teams, schools must provide supervisors for their spectators. Um, please complete the admin rep form that we shared with you earlier. This is due by March 11th. It's very important for us to know who is re representing your school as the administrative contact. Um, each school this year, our board has moved to giving each school eight complimentary tickets via the activities director. These tickets are specifically designed um, to provide support for you from your administrative team so that you have support in supervising your student sections and spectators. If you have a student section, please plan on standing in front of that student section and being very visible to those students. You have a relationship with them and, and it will be helpful that they understand you are there to hold them accountable for the behavior expectations. Another note as ADs work towards um, making sure that all those that wanna be a part of the state tournament experience are able to, we have a band cheer and mascot form that we need your attention to by Monday, March 11th. 
And this is something that will help us to better prepare if your band cheer team, or if you have the, uh, someone who can sing the national anthem, um, please complete this form. We do the national anthem prior to each session. And it's really important that we know who is there and who's able to do that. If you plan to bring only a mascot and not a cheer team, please note that you need to complete the cheer team form as mascots are considered a part of your cheer team. A mascot needs to be a student in your school and they also need to have an adult who's there to supervise them. So make sure that you make yourself familiar with that form on your dashboard. Some details as you prepare your teams to arrive at uh, Williams Arena and Maturi Pavilion. Buses will drop off teams. Um, on the right side, they will pull into the University Parking Garage um, loop. There's a, a drop off loop right there. And then they will walk across the street to access the facility. Your pass gate for, for players and coaches will be between Maturi and and Williams on the um, on the gar parking garage side uh, in the building. So make sure that you're coming in that door, it, whether you play in Williams or Maturi. Buses then can park on the 6th Street. Um, and there is a bus map on your coach and AD dashboard. Really important to note arrival times. Arri teams may arrive no earlier than 8.30 for your corner final game on Wednesday if you have the early game. After the early game, um, please note that we tend to have locker rooms available about 90 minutes prior to your game. Locker rooms are tight at Williams and Maturi, especially Wednesday and Thursday. So it's really important that if you are going to arrive early, you don't have the expectation to get in your locker room immediately. Teams need to be out of your locker rooms 40 minutes prior to, or, 40 minutes after the conclusion of your game so that we can facilitate getting the next teams in. If you have questions, you will have a team host that day and they will assist and facilitate with that. Quarterfinal, team, quarterfinal games Thursday, teams may arrive anytime after 9.30. Those quarterfinal games will be in Maturi and we will assist you again with your team host. Semifinals and finals, teams may arrive after 10.30 for the noon game and after 4.30 for the evening games. Please note that Williams Arena on those semifinal and final days is cleared out for cleaning between each session. Teams that have games in the evening will not be able to access their locker rooms prior to 4.30 and will have to leave the facility if you plan to come and watch the earlier games. Um, we cannot have people stay in between sessions those two days so that they have an opportunity to clean the building. Again, all of these details our, our team hosts will remind you of when you arrive and you are welcome to ask questions of our tournament managers or our team hosts. Um, really important information on your official roster. This should be very similar to what you did in your section tournament. You can have 18 players. You can have three coaches that are Minnesota State High School League certified coaches. This would be your head coach and two assistant coaches. And you can have two student managers. Very important that these are student managers and not adults who are part of your program. In addition, you can have five other people that sit behind the bench. Someone who is a statistician or a coach within your program that is also Minnesota State High School League certified, a co an athletic trainer or a doctor. Those two folks would need to be providing some sort of credential as far as medical credential as well as completing the um, transfer of care form that we would ask them to do. <clears throat> One of these five folks can also be someone who videotapes for you. If you've had a student manager who sets up your video all year long, we will please work with our team host as well as our tournament managers on where those student managers can set up. But please note that it could also be one of these adults in this five, um, other people, but they need to be Minnesota certified head coaches if they are a coach on your team. Please note that these five people are intended to be people who are a part of your program. They are not necessarily intended for your family members to attend. Um, they need to be someone who is a part of your program as a coach, statistician, or medical team. 
Um, also make sure that if any of you would have ineligible players that you review our bylaw 206 um, as far as where ineligible players are allowed to be during postseason play. If you have questions about this, connect with your activities director and they will be able to walk you through that process. Again, really important that um, as you come to the pass gate, adults, we will ask that you show some sort of ID, especially if you're coming with someone outside of your team. If you have a coach coming later, um, they will definitely need to be showing some sort of ID. Um, coaches and the five extra folks will be receiving wristbands as well as your student managers. We ask that you keep these wristbands on through the entire tournament as it will help the process of checking people in each day go a little bit quicker. Wristbands must be worn for the duration of the tournament and athletes need, to, um, please prepare your athletes to state their uniform number when they check in as that's how we will check them in on the list. Team hosts will meet you at the pass gate to go over your items. And if you have any questions, that's a great time to ask your team host because they will be meeting you and greeting you and welcoming you. Um, there's a small picture here kind of about how you should navigate this pass gate entrance. Please note that it does get congested at different times of the day. So please be patient as our pass gate people walk you through anything. Sharon or Barb, am I missing anything or would you like to add anything there? Perfect. I'll I write. Think... Go ahead. No, I think you covered it all, Lisa. Thank you. Team locker rooms are assigned. Again, you will work with your team host to get to that team locker room. It's really important that only your official squad and team personnel is allowed in the locker rooms. We will have University of Minnesota security checking wristbands to make sure that those who have them are in the right places. Um, there should be no video in your locker room. Encourage your kids to have this be a space that they are not using their phones for video and sending things out. It's very important that we comply with that. Locker rooms will be locked, but we still recommend no valuables be brought. Um, whiteboards and markers will be provided. If you need assistance with that, please let us know, but we will be providing whiteboards and markers in each locker room as you prepare. Again, always questions with uniforms. Most importantly, bring both uniforms every day. I would say make sure your kids have their white uniforms. Please note that in Minnesota, we wear white uniforms and dark uniforms, and the home team will wear dark uniforms. Um, the tournament bracket will determine who the home seed is, not your seed. So please make sure you look at the tournament bracket and work with your team host on whether you will be the home team or not. Be sure to bring both sets of uniforms and know that we will be following all uni NFHS uniform rules, um, ensuring that your kids' arms and leg sleeves, wristbands and headbands are the same color, color black or white, um, and you must wear the same color. And then undershirts must be that primary color of your uniform. <laughs> Pardon me. Coaches, we will be on the biggest stage in Minnesota. Um, you will be on TV. You will be um, in front of many, many fans. It's really important that you represent your schools well. Um, we ask that you dress business casual, which would not include sweatpants, joggers, jeans, or sweatshirts. There is some details in the slides about warmups. I know that many of you are excited to move to the seating, but I do want to just go over it. If you have questions, this information is also in your participating schools guide, as well as you can refer to these slides if you have questions. Um, there will be some different protocols depending on a quarterfinal game versus the semifinal and championship games. Uh, please note that quarterfinal game warmups will be five minutes or 20 minutes with five minutes in the locker room. Um, we will sweep the floor while you are down in the locker room. And then semifinals and championships will be 18 minutes with four minutes in the locker room. Your team host will also go over this this day, so please don't get anxious about it, but we will be introducing your entire team as you stand in front of your respective bench. We would ask that students step forward when their name is announced. We will not do huddles, we will not do the tunnel pieces, um, you, we will ask that you stand in numerical order. Uh, we will introduce student managers, reserves in numerical order, and then starters in numerical order along with coaches. And this is for the quarterfinals and semifinals. 
Uh, we will always start with the visiting team first. And then for championship game, third place game and consolation, we will introduce starters only. Again, your team hosts will go over this with you each day and you will have some cheat notes as well that they will give you. Half times, half times will be 10 minutes for quarterfinals, third place and consolation and semifinals and championships will be 12 minutes. Um, timeouts are going to be a little bit different during our semifinal and championship games due to TV. Quarterfinal games um, and consolation will be the same as regular season. So please note that semifinal and championship games um, will have two 90 second media timeouts in each half. So you can plan accordingly. <coughs> Pardon me. 12 minutes and six minutes will be those timeouts. Um, if the stoppage of play is for a foul, um, which the free throw is awarded, the player will shoot before the timeout is guaranteed or granted. Um, there are many details on these, and this is in your um, guide as well. And we will remind you that days of these games that it happens. Um, coaches, please make sure you're keeping your players on the bench until the for first, sort, first horn sounds during the semifinal and championship games. Um, and there will be a two minute TV timeout prior to any overtime period. Those are probably the big highlights. We will be using instant replay for semifinal and championship games only. There are certain criteria that's been agreed upon with the coaches association for numerous years on when we use instant replay. Uh, last second shot of a half or the end of the game, if there's a question, um, if a timer makes a mistake during the last two minutes of a close game, uh, typically we say point differential of 10 points or less. And then if the officials have a specific protocol, uh, the officials have a specific protocol when we do this and um, they determine when a review is going to happen. Interviews, Tim talked about um, interviews a little bit prior. I just wanted to put some things in here in case you have questions further. 45 TV will be interviewing coaches and players of winning teams on the court after each game. Media stewards will be taking coaches and players to the press room for interviews or the scrum area, as Tim mentioned before. Look for those folks who will help you get to the places you need to be during interview time. Um, and then post-game locker room, please make sure you're cleaning your locker room up. And again, that you're out after 40 minutes following your game. Awards. Awards are an important part of the state tournament and they're an important part to your kids. Please prepare your kids um, for the awards ceremony. Um, it's very important that you recognize that this is the biggest stage most of your kids have probably ever been on and preparing them for the awards presentation is important. They want to be doing it right and well and they, it is a great reflection of your program, win or lose. Kids should be proud of where they have come from. And being in a state tournament is a very exciting experience for them. Again, as Pat mentioned, all tournament team, if you win a quarterfinal game, there is a high likelihood that you will have an all tournament player, whether you um, continue in the regular bracket or in the consolation bracket. So please make sure that you look for someone if you are at Concordia from the all tournament team so that you, you know if you have a student who will be recognized so that they can be there. If you have a student recognized and they're not playing in the championship game, please make sure that you tell them to come to the pass gate with their parents to check in so that we can get them into the arena and where they need to go. So if you have a tournament all tournament team and you're not playing in the championship game, have that student athlete come to the pass gate with their family and we will get them where they need to go. Um, team awards, you will, we will have team award ceremonies after third place, consolation, and championship games. Please make sure your kids stay in their uniforms. We will not be having handshakes happen, so as your students receive a medal, they don't need to go and shake the other team's hand. Um, it gets a little clunky, and um, it's hard for kids to know where they should and shouldn't go and they get a little anxious, so we will not be doing that piece. Only if the official roster will receive awards, so please note that those five extra folks behind your bench will not receive a medal if you do win or, or receive a medal that day. 
schools are able to order additional medals. Um, if you would like your AD to, you can connect with him or her. I've talked a lot about Williams in the pavilion. There is also third place in consolation that happens at Concordia University. We're not going to go over all those details today, but please note that there is a tournament guide on your coach's dashboard that talks about the logistics at Concordia. And um, I, would, I would just suggest maybe printing that off in case you need it as a backup. Officials, I just wanted to touch briefly on officials. Please note that officials are selected by a committee. Um, they meet each day to talk with our officials coordinator as well as our girls basketball officials assigner. Um, they will be really good. They will not be perfect. We, they will try their best to listen and communicate with you within reason. They will in coach, enforce the coach's box and um, they will call technical fouls where the, they're deserved. Please help your fans, your student athletes and others model respectful behavior towards the officials. A quick message from me, really excited to have you here. The state tournament is one of the most exciting things that will happen probably in your kids' lives. And it's a great stage to really show girls basketball in Minnesota. Um, we have high level girls basketball and people are excited to see it. Um, we have great turnouts at our games and that's because you guys do a great job coaching your kids. So please prepare your kids, recognize that you spend a ton of time preparing them for the game. And it's really important to prepare them for this stage. There's highlight of media and media is all around. So it's really important to remind those kids and all of your staff that media is everywhere, as well as it's a very big stage. So please have them prepared that it's a state tournament and it's an important place to be. ADs, we really put a comprehensive information for you to share with your spectators. Please share it with your families, schools, and communities. We want your communities to be represented very well at the state tournament. And this is a way that we feel we can assist you in that. Last but not least, ask, if you don't know, Ask, ask myself, ask Barb, ask your team host, <laughs> ask ahead of time if you have a question. We want you to be the most prepared you can be and have the best experience you have. Um, Barb or Sharon, is there anything I missed? Fantastic. Again, if there's, um, I just wanted to highlight that there is a coaches association banquet. Um, the Minnesota State High School League does not run this, but I know it's been a really big success and, and a fun thing for your student athletes to be recognized for their success. This information is also on the dashboard. And please note, if you have any questions, your best contact is Lisa. And I know it's the same name as me, but um, a different person. So please feel free to reach out to her should you have questions about the banquet. Again, congratulations, and we will now move to the seating. Please know that the seating should be updated online within the next hour or hour and a half. Um, and Pat was here earlier to help with the random draw piece. I will start with class A, and I will start with um, the number one seed and go down from there. Again, really important to double check the time that you play. I will announce it, but I know that um, there's a lot of information on this meeting and it's a good resource to double check that bracket. So with that, we will start with class A. Um, the number one seed, Goodhue, will play random draw Mayor Lutheran on Thursday, March 14th at 11 at Maturi. The number four seed Underwood will play the number five seed Southwest Christian Thursday, March 14th at one o'clock in Maturi. The number two seed Mountain Iron Buell will play random draw Walker Hackensack Akeley on Thursday, March 14th at three o'clock in Maturi. And the number three seed Buffalo Lake Hector Stewart will play random draw Faustin on Thursday, March 14th at five o'clock in Maturi. Now we'll move on to class 2A. 
number one seed, Providence Academy, will play Random Draw Perum Wednesday, March 13th at 6 o'clock in Williams Arena. Number four seed, New London Spicer, will play number five seed, Crosby Ironton, Wednesday, March 13th at 8 p.m. at Williams Arena. Number two seed, Albany, will play Random Draw, Rochester Lourdes, Wednesday, March 13th, 6 p.m. at Maturi. Number three seed, Minnehaha Academy, will play Random Draw, Waterville, Elysian, Morristown, Wednesday, March 13th at 8 p.m. in Maturi. Now moving on to class 3A. Number one, Benilde St. Margaret will play Random Draw, Minneapolis Roosevelt, Wednesday, March 13th at 10 a.m. at Maturi. Number four seed, St. Peter will play number five seed, Stuartville, Wednesday, March 13th at 12 o'clock at Maturi. Number two seed, De La Salle will play Random Draw, Tatino Grace, Wednesday, March 13th 2 p.m. at Maturi. Number three seed, Alexandria, will play Random Draw, Rock Ridge, Wednesday, March, 15, March 13th, 4 p.m. at Maturi. Now, Class 4A. Number one seed, Hopkins, will play Random Draw, White Bear Lake, Wednesday, March 13th, at 10 a.m. at Williams Arena. Number four seed Maple Grove will play number five seed Lakeville North Wednesday, March 13th at 12 p.m. at Williams Arena. Number two seed Minnetonka will play Random Draw Andover Wednesday, March 13th at 2 p.m. at Williams Arena. And number three seed Albertville, St. Michael Albertville, will play Random Draw Rosemont Wednesday, March 13th at 4 p.m. at Williams Arena. Again, those are the seeds, and those will be up in within the next hour and a half. And we're really excited to host you this week, and we look forward to a great week with your teams, your coaches, and your communities. Thank you for all your work. Have a great day.